We're going to be learning about multiple slit interference and what are called diffraction gratings. And that's why I put this one here, feeling good, I'm great, because it's a grating. So uh, before we can talk about uh, multiple slit interference, I just want to remind you again about single slit diffraction. And that's because it's going to be important. We're going to compare them. So first of all, do you remember with light right here coming into a single slit right here? Do you remember what happens is if I draw this right here as my sort of reference here, um, I'm going to end up with, you know, this big bright, you know, dot in the center and then little ones like this here. And if I'm projecting these angles right here, so let's just say I have an angle like this here, theta maybe that goes to the first minimum right here like this. Remember this ends up making this kind of pattern here. If I'm looking at the intensity of light right here with respect to theta in radians, it goes something like this. Where remember the angle right here that tells us you know the first minimum. Okay so this is what we've been learning about for a uh, single slit diffraction. So what about multiple slit diffraction? Well, that's often called a diffraction grating, and that's where we have multiple slits for light to pass through. So the light's coming from the left, going to the right, and it's passing through these different openings here. And we're going to have the slit separation here, we're going to call that D. And if we define this right here, maybe I'll just like define this, you know, this reference right here like this, and this right here will be the angle theta here. This will be the angle um, from the normal to the grating. So what's going to happen is because there's a bunch of these here, they're all going to be interfering. I'm not going to show all the rays because it'll get a little bit crazy. But basically, we end up with some intensity pattern now that goes like this right here. So it's going to go kind of up, then down, then up, then down. I'm not perfect at drawing these, but I hope you understand the, what I'm looking for like this. Now, do you remember uh, constructive interference? If there's constructive interference, that's when the path difference is equal to n times lambda, where n was some sort of order. And we're still going to have that there. So for example, uh, n can be 0, n can be 1, n can be 2. So, you know, we can say, for example, um, oh, I'm seeing a second order diffraction pattern. I'm seeing a third order diffraction pattern. Then you're going to use n is, you know, 1 or 2 or 3 or whatever. So we have this equation that's in our data booklet and goes like this, n lambda equals d sine theta. Where again, don't forget, the angle is from the normal of the grading. So in other words, the way I've drawn it here, this is the grading going this way, so the normal is 90 degrees to it. d is a slit separation, uh, lambda is the wavelength of a light, and n is this order. It could be any number here. And I just want to show you uh, this thing really, really important as well for your diffraction grading. You need to know uh, there's like a little equation for you to learn. So this D right here, we're going to actually define that D is going to be 1 over N. Now this is an equation I think you should memorize. Okay, I think this here is another one worth memorizing. There's not so many I think you should memorize in physics, but I think this one you should. So you should memorize this one. Where, by the way, what's N? N is the number of lines per meter. So we're going to see, for example, um, uh, well, I'll give you an example that shows this. Before we go anywhere else, I just want to point out one really important thing, is that this one right here is in degrees, this angle. We've been learning before, we've been having a lot of our other angles have been in radians, but this one right here, this angle right here, this n lambda equals d sine theta, this is in degrees. That's really important, okay? So we've been looking at a single slit pattern. Remember a single slit pattern, just to remind you in case you already forgot, I hope not. I hope this is getting really, really obvious to you. Single slit pattern looks like this right here. And we just did a multiple slit pattern now. So that means if it's got lots of slits, then it looks, you know, the pattern is kind of like this. Okay, so that's multiple slit, that's single slit. Now there exist some conditions, you know, you can have some conditions where uh, a double slit pattern might be a combo of these two. So what then? So this is going to be like an exam tip right here. So sometimes you can have a single slit pattern that can modulate uh, a multiple slit pattern. What does that mean? Well, that means that there's some conditions where, you know, you have to combine these two. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw myself the single slit pattern. So this one here, this airy pattern goes like this right here and like this right here. And what's going to happen is I'm going to fit the multiple slit pattern within this. So in other words, it's going to go kind of like this right here, and then up, and then down, then up, and down. It's not perfect, but I hope you get the idea. Uh, so like this right here. I think this is kind of cool. So this right here, if you saw a graph like this right here and you're asked about it, you could say, oh, this is a sign that there is a single slit pattern that's modulating a multiple slit pattern. So that's what you could say here.
Now let's do an example where we have a uh, diffraction grating. And that's why I put this one here, diffraction gratings are so groovy. So we've got a parallel beam of monochromatic light, that just means one wavelength, um, that is incident on a diffraction grating with 600 lines per millimeter. Ooh, I'll we'll have to learn about those. What are those? Uh, now the light is initially normal to the grating. Well, that's good. And what I'll do is I'll maybe just draw, you know, my little grating here, like something like this. And this means that this distance, you know, between these these holes right here, uh, this is D. Okay, now, I know that I have a second order maximum. What does that mean? That's N. And if it's a second order, N equals 2. So that's really good to know. It's seen at an angle. Oh, so now I know theta. Theta is 43 degrees. And it's angle to the normal. Oh, that's good, because that means uh, we were drawing these before like this here. In other words, if this is here like this, and this goes like this, for example. Well, then I've got my angle here. My angle is 43 degrees. Okay, that's good to know. And the question is, what's the wavelength of light used? Well, I can just try to use that equation, can't I? I can just say, ah, n lambda equals d sine theta. Okay. Well, that means if I wanted to do this, all I got to do is get lambda by itself. So that means I have lambda equals, let's see, it's d sine theta over n. Uh, well, that seems pretty straightforward so far, over n. Okay, that's great. Um, so do I know theta? Yes. Do I know n? Yes. Do I know d? No. So this is going to be the important part here, okay? We need d. So how do I find d? Well, I can use this. Uh, remember I was showing you this uh, equation right here for d, that d equals 1 over n, where n is the number of lines per millimeter, or sorry, per meter. So I know, actually, that n equals, let's see, it's going to be 600 lines. That's 600 lines for 1 millimeter. But I need n as uh, lines per meter. So what do I do? Well, I can do just a conversion right here. So what do I know? I know that there's a thousand millimeters in one meter. And what does that do? That gets rid of my millimeters and I end up with lines per meter. So that's good. So that means I have 600,000. Ah, so then I can say that. I can say that. Okay, D, uh, sorry, N. So N equals 600,000. You know, I can say lines per meter. That's actually quite a bit. So that is going to be my uh, answer for n, and therefore I can find d then. So that means d is going to be equal just 1 over 600,000. So now I'm just ready to solve for lambda. So lambda equals, let's see, d, well that was 1 over 600,000, uh, times sine theta, so I'll put the sine theta on the bottom, on the top I mean, sorry, so sine of 43 degrees, and n well, n is 2, isn't it? So I'll just say this right here times 2. There we go. So I've got this right here. So I've got 1. Well, maybe I'll just remove the 1 because that's kind of ugly to look at. So it's like the sine of 43 over 600,000 times 2. Well, that's just 1.2 million. So let's just figure this out on my calculator here. So I need to make sure my calculator is in degree mode. And I'm going to do a fraction. And I'm going to say, what is the sine of 43 degrees, all that divided by 600,000 times 2, which is 1.2 million. Just kind of make sure I have the right number of zeros. I think I need one more, don't I? Yeah. And there we go. Signed up uh, with an answer of 5.68 times 10 to the minus 7. So this has units of meters. And if I want to think about significant figures, let's see, I can use probably three significant figures. So I'll say 5.68 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. That could be my answer. Or even better yet, if I want to consider nanometers, because I like to think about those, because then I understand a little bit about color, I can move this over by 2 to make this 10 to the minus 9. So I'll have 568 nanometers. This will be approximate. Uh, so there we go. There's my answer. It's 568 nanometers, which is, that's going to be like a, like a yellow green kind of thing. So some sort of yellowish greenish color. There we go. Cause that's, you know, 400 ish is uh, blue and 700, 600, 700 ish is red. So this is somewhere in the middle. There we go.